So what I thought we'd do today is an example of how to install the GP340 software and a very basic programming example where I'm going to put in one channel and one set of CTCSS, which are tones that stop you from receiving interference or at least reduce that. To make a start, I've already downloaded the software here. So when you've downloaded the software, you'll notice that it's actually a zip folder. It's not something that you should be clicking into like this, although you can, uh, probably not a good idea. So right click on it, click extract all, leave everything as it is and make sure this box is ticked. Click extract. Wonderful. Okay, so it's now opened a list, as we can see, of files and we want the English one, okay? You'll, you'll see two files here. One says GP300 application EMEA. The other one is a README file. Go ahead, by all means, and have a look at that README file, but the one that's of interest to us is actually the GP300 application EMEA. Let's double click on that. We'll click yes here, because we do want to make these changes. Next, then click yes to this, and then of course click next again. Um, you don't really have to put anything in these boxes, um, but I'm just going to put Radiotronics in both and then leave whatever was already in that box there, and click next, and then again click next, and it's going to put it in this folder. <clears throat> Actually, I want it in a Motorola folder, so I'm going to put it there and then put a backslash and then it'll create a subfolder because I've already got a Motorola folder uh, somewhere there, yep, yeah, which I've got some other software installed. So I want it installed just alongside that. Let's click next. Perfect, that's installed. Right, so let's close uh, this that's just opened. We will restart our computer later, click finish, and then we will close all of these windows until we're back at the desktop. So that's the software fully installed. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and have a look at the software. I'm gonna open an existing programming file that I've got from another radio, and we'll have a look at how we can program uh, some settings into that file. Okay, in order to start the GP340 software, we first need to go to the start menu, and then we need to scroll down to wherever you installed it. As you saw in the installer, I specified that I was going to put it in a Motorola folder, and here it is. Confusingly, it doesn't actually say <laughs> it's the GP340 software. It just kind of gives you a, a sort of revision number, um, but that's okay. Just so you know, it is this one, and it's kind of like, a little icon with some green ones and zeros by the looks of things. Let's click on there and open it up. Let's have a look. It always opens up with a blank screen like this. I like to maximize it so that all that I can see on my screen is the application at hand. So if this is your first time using this software, the first thing you'll need to do is plug in your GP340 and your programming cable. Once you've done that, you will then click File and click Read Device. I don't have a GP340 plugged in, so I'm going to simulate you reading your device by quite simply opening a code plug. We're going to be programming one channel into this radio, and as you can see, there's already a channel programmed, but we're going to make changes to that channel, and we're going to put it on Simple UK Channel 1 which is an Ofcom frequency that uh, you can buy a license for and you can use radios anywhere in the United Kingdom and Northern Ireland. So that will be 449.3125 and then 449.3125. Okay, we also need to set the channel spacing to 12.5 and the power level to high. Unless, of course, you have a technical reason for the power to be low, power should be high. The next tab is display. Now the radio that I have open here, or that I've emulated opening, is a GP340. 
one that we talked about earlier, as you can see, it doesn't actually have a display. The reason why this tab exists is because the GP340 actually has a big brother called a GP, let's say GP360, for example. Yep, there it is. And if we were programming that particular radio, then we would have more options in here. And the first one would be what we can call the channel name. And we can tick that box and we can uh, type it in there. And then it will be shown on this screen when we select a particular channel, it will be given a name. Uh, since we're dealing with the GP340 and not one of its big brothers, we're, we don't have that option here. The next option is PL or DPL. PL is what Motorola calls CTCSS, and DPL is what Motorola calls DCS. I'll leave a link in the video description to explain what CTCSS is. Uh, on There's a great article on Wikipedia, and I'll leave that in the video description. Good. So, for in, in the interest of simplicity, we're going to use CTCSS, which is PL, and you'll have to select it in both the, uh, the TX and the RX field. And then we're going to select the first one in the list, which is XZ or 67.0. And that's it. In a future video, I might go through what all these things mean. Uh, but for today, it's a basic programming example and that's it. So let's just go over what we just did. We've typed in a frequency, which is 449.3125. And we've typed in a frequency in the receive box as well. That means that they will transmit and receive on the same frequency. We're not using a repeater, which would have used two different frequencies. We're just using a simplex mode with the radio, so that's fine. Then we went to the uh, PLDPL tab, and we selected PL, and we selected PL here too, and we made sure that they both show 67.0. In this miscellaneous field, I will mention one thing where it's personality here. Now, luckily, we only have one personality, which is this thing here. The reason I, I opened this one here to show you that personality was just to make sure that we only had one. I wasn't actually going to do anything with it, but I will show you what that is. Each channel on a GP340 can be assigned to a personality, which means that that channel or that whatever's assigned to that personality will do or won't do a certain thing. So looking at personality one, the first thing you can see is transmit admit criteria. I always set this as always allowed on customer radios. There are some other options and we can go through that in a future video. But for today, we're going to select always allowed. The first option in the squelch tab is the PL or DPL option. Now that <laughs> denotes whether your radio will be listening out for those CTCSS tones or not. We've had it in the past where customers have programmed radios and have come to us and asked for a little bit of help. Uh, and they've said, oh, but, you know, it's not taking any notice of the, of the CTCSS or PL or DPL. And the first thing that we say is, look, check your personality and check the squelch tab because it must be set to this one, PL slash DPL squelch. So make sure that's set to this option here. There are many other options per personality. I'm not going to go through those in this video. This video is just to show you how to create a single channel in your radio. And let's have a look. So we've put the frequencies in and made sure they match in the transmit and the receive side. We made sure the channel spacing was at 12.5 and we made sure the power was high. We then went to this tab here and made sure that PL was selected in both transmit and receive and that we had 67.0 selected in both sides. Then we went to the personality and we made sure that transmit criteria is always allowed and then we went to squelch and made sure that PL slash DPL was selected. We click close. It's always, always good practice, always good practice to save our code plug. All right, good. So now what we have is we have a, so now what we have is we have a GP340 programming file or code plug with a single channel in it and a single personality that references CTCSS and tells the radio what to do and how to do it. 
Now that we've configured our radio with a single channel and a single personality that references CTCSS, we're now ready to start to write our radio. The way that we do that is to make sure our radio is plugged in. That's incredibly important to begin with. And we go to File and we click Write Device.